Hi and welcome back to another video. Today I would like to wrap up the novels that I read in the month of September. Well, actually, mostly they are biographies. I read three books this month and I would like to start with The Stardust Interviews by David Bowie. This was collected and curated by Cornelia Kühne and Juliana Nosek. This is a Swiss publication and it does make sense to me because I can't see an English speaking person buying a book of David Bowie interviews when they can just look up the interviews. I'm pretty sure they are available on YouTube somewhere in the internet. But for someone with a language barrier that just wants to know um, David Bowie a bit better, this is completely understandable. For me personally, when I was reading through the interviews, like my goal in this was also to get to know David Bowie a bit better and his life and his view on life, but through his own words. Um, and for that I was actually missing some explanations, like I would have um, actually loved to see uh, not only when that took place, but who was the person he was talking to, was this on radio or television, what were the circumstances, why was he in that interview, like stuff like that I was just missing from the overall way that this book was constructed to help me, you know, categorize these interviews for myself. Other than that, it's like a pretty simple concept. I feel like they try to keep it as balanced as possible. They didn't only like show the positive parts of David Bowie's life, not only positive interviews, not only him getting praised by interviews, but also him like admitting to his faults in interviews, admitting that like he once did fascist things while on drugs and that that was irresponsible and unapologizable and also admitting that he did drugs like okay admitting i think he never really hid that <laughs> but still like leaving that in his addiction leaving in like his struggle with artistry um with creativity and not always portraying him in the most glorious lights just letting the man speak for himself with all his uh, downsides and upsides. And at this point I would like to give another recommendation David Bowie related. This is semi-timely, I am not sure because Austria does have later release dates when it comes to cinema, um, but Moon Age Daydream, if you haven't seen it, it's actually pretty recommendable, pretty watchable. It's just a tad too long in my opinion, but it's on David Bowie and his uh, life as an artist. The good thing about the movie and what I really appreciate it as well as I did with the interview book is that you get to hear his world view and the way that he lived through his own words. So they didn't really cut in anybody who was talking about him. They were just taking again interview clips and just cut them in and let him describe himself. Uh, through his own words as with the interviews. The only downside of the movie is that they really painted him in a positive picture and I feel like that sort of distorts his person, like him as a human. Uh, they didn't mention his addiction, they didn't mention the drug face, they didn't mention anything before Ziggy Stardust, they, they went a bit into like um, his brother and his mental health issue, but you know, it stops with him going to the hospital. They never really talk about anything graver. It's like a tribute for David Bowie and for all the people who just admire him to watch. I personally am just more of a fan of portrays of realism, like I love to see the ups and downs of a person that makes me feel like they're more human, makes me more connected to them. But I can't say that I didn't enjoy the movie, you know, it's still very well made. It might not be for you if you don't really like the artsy way of, of storytelling, it's pretty pretty like artsy fartsy if you want to say it like that, um, but it's definitely worth a watch. And here's another recommendation. Um, I know I realize this is like a booktube channel, but still. Um, if you have never listened to anything by David Bowie, I wouldn't recommend to start there, but Low is a very fantastic record. I uh, really fell in love with it. If you've never listened to David Bowie, as I said, wouldn't recommend to start there. I would actually recommend to like listen to his most popular songs first, get like a best of list and then listen to that. And if you feel like he's your type of, of musician and you've 
kind of like his music, then check out Low. Low is really, really phenomenal and uh, outstanding record. Okay, now let's get back to books. The next book that I read is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is how it looks like, you've already seen it. As I said, it's been talked about so much on BookTube. This is an honest, emotional and somewhat cynical portrayal of Jeanette McCurdy's life journey so far. I am sure you have already heard it, but Jeanette McCurdy was the actress of the very popular character Sam in the TV show iCarly. This show aired on Nickelodeon from the year 2007 until the year 2012. After that she got her own TV show called Sam and Cat uh, together with Ariana Grande and after that I think she did something for Netflix but then she stopped acting and she kind of disappeared from uh, the surface. And now in this memoir she talks about her relationship on her mother. It's The focus is more on that, not on her acting career. It's obviously part of her life, but that's not the emphasis. Because, you know, there are allegations against Dan Snyder. Um, but it's really, the focus really isn't on that. It's more on her relationship towards her mother and how her mother actually kind of gaslighted her into being an actress and also equipped her with an eating disorder. Now I've also linked two interviews in the info box down below if you are interested. She is talking about her book in those interviews and the interviews are somewhat sensitive so that's why I put them down there. I thought they were really good interviews. Now what was impressive about this memoir to me was that Jeanette is showing you scenes of her life, like they are selected scenes. And through those scenes you see how she was primed to go down the path of self-destruction. And then when her mom dies, because this is like split into a before and an after section, um, before her mother died and after her mother died, she's showing herself, slowly understanding that she was the victim to abuse. And this is exactly how children feel, you know, how it is to grow up with a trauma or with experience of abuse. When you're a child, you don't know better. This is your reality, this is how it's normal. And once you start seeing other families, once you start seeing other interactions, you start to understand that this, no, this wasn't normal. And she also didn't sugarcoat her actions, she didn't censor her thoughts, um, she described her emotions. Like, this was super real and very close to, to her soul. I, I don't know if I can say that, but that's how I felt reading this. Um, and I love that. I love that. This is like everything and more that I expected or ever wanted from this. And then the last book that I really finished in the month of September is Crying in H Mod by Michelle Zahner. Funnily enough, this story has a lot in common with Jeanette McCurdy's story. It's also Michelle talking about the loss of her mother, um, talking about like her relationship to her and her mother also died because of cancer and how she found herself through that. And this has more of an angle of um, the cultural identity, of like finding back to her roots, making out the elements that made her Korean um, or that like distinguished her from other people. Now, unfortunately, I had this direct comparison to Jeanette's very honest memoir um, and this felt pretty lackluster next to it. So maybe it's my bias of having read something that I found was phenomenal and just being next, like being the next thing that I finished after it. There was something that just didn't resonate with me the same way that something in Jeanette McCurdy's memoir resonated with me. On, on one hand, she did a good job on establishing like emotions. I could empathize uh, with her in certain in certain scenes, but then she used a form of expression that I cannot find other words for than saying that it's very... It was artsy. So there was this sense of an artist describing a scene. It felt like a script. It felt edited. It didn't feel real. It felt like she was talking about another person and not herself. 
somehow her reality for me wasn't able to transmit and I felt like I was missing her from her story. It's very strange because I, I feel like that is um, that is not the experiences that other people had with this. Additionally, I was also missing structure. I couldn't really see where like the stories she would tell were headed. Um, I felt like it would have been beneficial to her if she knew what she wanted to say beforehand and then created like the scenarios and the story she wanted to tell um, based on that. But the way that she told her story, it felt more like she was rambling and hoping that at the end it would make sense because it's her emotions and this book is about emotions and memoir, her experience and what she felt. But I don't know, the connection, the connection, I was, it wasn't there for me. And then there's a fun thing that I just wanted to share that doesn't really have anything to do with the story, with the book or something. Uh, but just to, so I want to give an example on translation. Um, so forget everything, this isn't part of the review. So at one point they are writing on invitation cards, they are writing some quotes. And one quote is Kunst semicolon macht semicolon Kunst. And she translates that. And there is some translation like some sense of the translation missing so that's i just wanted to let you in on that finally having a benefit of speaking german <laughs> and um she translates this to art power art which is not per se a wrong translation because uh, the macht is written with a capital m therefore it's a noun and macht does translate to power if it's a noun but you can also use Macht as a verb in the third person and then it means making or doing um, and then it would translate also to art makes art or does art so there's another meaning in that as well just wanted to let you in on that completely random, I know uh, and then finally just for complacency I'm not gonna talk about it because I DNF'd it um, is Japanese Gothic Tales by Izumi Kyoka. This was on my TBR for fall. I just realized that there is a lot of symbolism that uh, Kyoka uses that I don't know about and therefore the stories don't make sense to me yet. So I feel like I need to learn more about like also historical events, uh, also cultural uh, aspects and like more on Izumi Kyoka and the way that he told stories because I, I couldn't understand even with the explanations in the back, there were explanations, but they kind of also didn't make sense to me. So overall, I just didn't understand it and I had to DNF it. Anyways, thank you so much. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you at another time in another video. Bye.